Hi everyone, this is Ashley, and today we're going to be going over broad and narrow topics. So what does broad and narrow mean, first of all? So broad means a wide range of topics and subjects, and this is not specific, while narrow means limited, which means more specific. So if you want to think about it, this is broad because it shows a wide range of the road, while narrow would be like this alleyway because it is more um, narrow in width. So broad is not specific and narrow is specific. Also, we're talking about this because when you are researching for research papers, you need to come up with research questions. And it is important to make sure that your research topic is not too broad or too narrow. And we'll go through the reasons why soon. So which is better for research? So broad topics are not specific for research, but they are a good starting point. And then we have narrow topics, which are more specific for research and are better for later research. So when you first start, you want to start off with a very broad topic, like you might do social media. But then you might want to go into a more narrow topic, like um, what does social media do to our brains? But then it's like, whose brains? So if you want to go even more narrower, what does social media do to teenagers' brains? And you can keep going even more narrower. But if you go too narrow, then you're not going to find any results. So you want to make sure that a topic is not too broad or too narrow. So how do you know if it's too broad or too narrow, though? You want to make sure you find that perfect middle. So a good topic will address a specific topic and a specific question. So you'll know if it is too broad if you're finding too much information. If there's way too much information on the internet about it or in a book or any other source you use when doing research, then that means it is too broad. Like if we just looked up dogs, you're going to find a ton of information on dogs, different types of dogs, uh, where dogs originated from. That's way too much to do a paper on, unless you're planning on writing a book. And then information can be broken into specific aspects of the topic. So if I looked up dogs and I wanted to do a research paper on it, but then I realized, wait, there's like a million different kinds of breeds. That means that my topic can be broken into a ton of different topics, so that is not specific enough. If you wanted to make it even more specific, then you could break it into one of the types of dogs. So you could do a paper on Yorkshire Terriers or Labrador Retrievers, that type of a thing. And then your topic could be summed up into one or two words. That means that um, it can only be talked about in a little bit. So that would be too broad as well. And if entire books have been written on your topic, it is too broad. That means there's way too much information out of there. And you do not want to do that then. That is not good for a paper that needs to be specific enough for your teacher to understand it, as well as your audience. And then we have too narrow. Too narrow is the exact opposite of too broad. Too broad is not being specific enough, while too narrow is being too specific. So if you're being too narrow with your topic, that means you find very little or nothing written on your topic. It's just too narrow of a topic to find a ton of things to write about for your paper. And you can fully cover your topic in only a few words or sentences. Again, that's not good enough for a paper, because if you only write a sentence like, dogs are an animal, well, that's not going to give you a good paper. And remember, you want your topic to be a question, so then when you figure out uh, your paper, you want to make sure you're answering that question. Okay, here's a quick video. When you start the research process, you will probably have a broad topic in mind. However, if you only search by topic, your paper may not have a clear focus, since each source you find might be related to a different aspect of that topic. To be done right, research needs to be guided by a focused research question. In your research question, you should focus on what you really want to find out or prove related to a specific aspect of your broad topic. For many students, developing a good research question is actually one of the hardest parts of the research process because not every question works as a good research question. First, a good research question should not be too narrow or too broad. If you can answer your question with a few facts, what else are you going to talk about in the rest of your paper? On the other hand, if you would need to write an entire book to appropriately answer your question, then it is probably not a good question for you either, at least at this level. 
Your question also needs to be specific, not vague. For example, a question such as, which is better, Facebook or Twitter, is vague. It is not really clear what you mean by better, or on what criteria you will judge the two platforms. Also, be careful that your question is something that you can research, something for which there will be enough sources available that you will be able to access. After you've identified a possible research question, it's usually a good idea to do some preliminary research just to be sure that you will be able to locate enough sources to answer your question. All right, let's move on. So how do I broaden or narrow a topic? So I did an example, as I said before, of dogs. So this is too broad right here. But then if we go all the way down here, chocolates versus chihuahuas, that's a lot more narrow, but that could be maybe too narrow though. We don't know. So when you are deciding on a broad or narrow topic, you can use an upside down triangle like this. This is an example over here as well. So for me, I did dogs for my topic. Then I thought, how can I narrow this down? So then I did types of dogs. That's a little bit more narrower, but still a huge topic to write about. So then I did big dogs versus small dogs. Still a little bit too broad though. So then I did chocolate labs versus chihuahuas. Now that is a solid um, paper you can do because then you can compare and contrast the two versus coming up with every single big dog, every single small dog or every single type of dog, or just dogs in general. That topic gets bigger and bigger. That's why this is a bigger font, this is a smaller font, and it's the bigger part of the triangle and the smaller triangle. It's just like a funnel where it goes down, 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 and down until you get your perfect topic. And if I even wanted, I could go even more down to get an even more narrow topic, but then that might limit your research. Okay, let's go through some practice. So you're gonna put these in order of most broad, middle, and most narrow. And these are your choices. Comic book heroes, compare Spider-Man and Batman, or compare Spider-Man's and Batman's origin stories. So you're gonna put one in each of the blanks, each one of the bullet points. And as a bonus question, which is the best for a research paper? So which of these three topics do you think is the best? All right, go ahead and pause the video. I'll give you a second to figure out which goes with which, and then I'll reveal the answer. All right, so here's the answer. So most broad would be comic book heroes because there's a ton of different comic book heroes you could pick out of. That's too broad. The middle is compare Spider-Man and Batman. Those are two topics that you could easily compare. But if you wanna make it even more narrow, you could do compare Spider-Man's and Batman's origin stories, which would be very specified into their origin stories. I would say the best, in my opinion, is either the middle or the most narrow. But if you want a larger paper, so if you have more time to write and you need like a five-page paper, you might just compare the two. But if you only need a one-page paper, then you might just compare their origin stories. It really depends on what type of paper you need. But the most broad, the comic book heroes, would be more like a book. So I would think maybe this would be for a book, this would be for a five-page paper, maybe this would be for a one-page paper. And here's another quick video here. A good research question is really like a lighthouse. It's essential to guide your research paper. It pinpoints exactly what you want to find out and gives your work a clear purpose and focus. Hi, I'm Jessica from Scribber, here to help you achieve your academic goals. Without further ado, here are five steps to develop a strong research question. Step one, choose a broad topic. Go with the topic that sparks your interest, since you'll be spending quite some time with it. For me, I'm thinking maybe something about social media. Step two, do some preliminary reading about the topic. Okay, so I've read a lot of newspaper writing about how social media negatively impacts high school students' academic performances and they also happen to be one of the most active age groups on social media. Step three, narrow down to a specific niche. This way, you can make sure the research is within a feasible scope instead of something too broad to achieve in a given time frame. Since academic performance is too broad, let me narrow it down to attention span. Step four, identify a research problem. So we have already established that adolescents are one of the most active age groups on social media platforms. 
but only a scarce amount of research has been done on the effect of social media has on the younger generation's attention span. So this will be my research problem. Step 5. Write your research question. Turning your research problem into a question. And it sounds something like, what effect does daily use of Twitter have on the attention span of people in the age group of 16 to 20? Since this is a descriptive research, the research question is also descriptive. But there are also other kinds of research questions. It all depends on the type of research you'll do. For example, comparative research, descriptive research, or correlational research. Now we have a research question. But how do you know if it's good or not? Here's a checklist for you. A good research question should be focused. And focused it is. Since it focuses on a single problem of Twitter's effect on the attention span of high school students, it should be researchable. That means the answer to your question can be found by collecting empirical data or through existing literature. In our case, we can go for a quantitative approach, like using eye tracking or mouse tracking to measure the attention span. It needs to be feasible. So is it doable within a certain time frame? Do you have access to the data you need or the right kind of respondents? It really depends on your situation. But for this research question, it will fit more into the time frame of a longer project, so it wouldn't be feasible for an assignment you have to hand in by the end of the month. Be specific. All the terms you use in the research question should have clear meanings. Notice how I don't use often, but daily? And instead of using adolescents, I use a specific age group. The research question should also be complex enough. If the research question can be answered with yes or no, or with easily found facts, then it's not complex enough. Last but not least, make sure a problem is relevant to your field of study or society. Well, social media is pretty much all we use now, so that's definitely relevant to society. It also targets a currently unanswered question and contribute knowledge that future research can build on. Now keep in mind, in a research paper or essay, you usually only write one research question. But for a bigger project, you can also develop multiple research questions around the same problem. For example, I can also ask, does the infinite scroll function on Twitter contribute to the effect on attention span? Follow the steps and checklist and you end up with the research question as a solid foundation for your research. Make sure you also check out our articles on writing the literature review and the methodology section. It's linked in the description. Good luck writing! I'll see you on our next video! Okay, so hopefully that helped you understand it too. So this is a checklist from the video that she had. You may want to write this down if you want to remember it, or you may want to come back to it when you end up having a research assignment. Okay, so as a reminder, broad means a wide range of topics and subjects, so this is not specific. And narrow means limited, which means more specific. And broad topics are not specific for research, but they are a good starting point, while narrow topics are more specific for research and are better for later research. So broad is not specific, narrow is specific. And then you can use an upside down triangle to create broad and narrow topics. The broadest being at the top and the narrowest being at the bottom. All right, hope you learned something and have a good day.